animatedanatomy.com. Now, in this lesson, I will be talking about the heart. I will not be talking about the heart functions such as emotions and feelings. <laughs> I will rather look at the heart as a pump. Now, what does it pump? Well, it's pumping blood. I will remove the skeletal system so we can see the heart and blood vessels better. Here we have the heart. The blood from the body is coming to the heart through this here, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. They sum the blood here to the right atrium. Now, the blood from the right atrium goes to the right ventricle here. I will show you the cross sections later. I just want to show you the broad image of how the heart works. I will show you the inside structure a little bit later, so stay patient. The blood from the right ventricle goes here through the pulmonary trunk under the aorta. I will talk about the aorta too. And then here it comes out as this blue artery, okay? Now, why does it come here? And what should blood from the body through the heart go through the pulmonary trunk and what should it do here? Well, it's quite obvious. The blood from the body was carrying CO2 because the oxygen was spent in the body. Now it was carrying it here because here we have the lungs. And the lungs is the place where this blood re releases CO2 and receives O2. Now the blood from the lungs goes through this red vein here and this vein here. This is the superior pulmonary vein and this is the inferior pulmonary vein. Those are the right ones. We also have on the left side too. They gather the blood in the left atrium here. Now the blood from the left atrium goes to the left ventricle. Now the blood from the left ventricle goes here through the aorta and then again this O2 rich blood goes to the rest of the human body. Now let's look at the cross section of the heart. First, I told you that we have the superior vena cava, and that is this blood here. And it comes here to the right atrium. We also have the blood from the inferior vena cava, and it comes out here, also in the right atrium. When you have this myocard here relaxed, it's obvious that the volume of the ventricle is going to increase, and the blood can enter the ventricle because once the volume increases these cordy tendony here those are the cordy tendony these y things are going to pull the valve inwards and that way they're going to open it once it's open the blood from the atrium can enter the valve well what's happening now the myocard is contracting once the myocard contracts the cordy tendony are not going to pull the valve anymore and valve is going to close here. So the blood from the right ventricle cannot exit back to the right atrium. Well, where can it go? It can go through the semilunar valves. In case of stenosis or insufficiency of these valves, you can have serious issues that can be life-threatening. Now the blood that way goes through the lungs, from here through here all the way over there to lungs. Then what? The O2 rich blood is coming through these pulmonary veins here and it's going, I'll choose a different color, and it's coming here in the left atrium. Please note that you have the pulmonary veins here. Those are the left pulmonary veins. Once the blood gathers here, with the same principle, you have the blood entering the left ventricle. When the left ventricle contracts, 
the wall closes and the blood goes here and through this artery it comes out here so it's behind it is behind the pulmonary trunk here so what is actually pumping the blood it is the myocard the muscle this muscle is not contracting on all places with the same speed that's why we are able to read the ECG here are the arteries of the heart it is important to understand this because depending upon which artery is blocked the myocardial fraction happens in that region let's start by explaining the right coronary artery that branches here into a marginal artery and over there behind to a posterior descending artery then we also have the left coronary artery that separates into the left anterior descending artery that has a diagonal branch over here and continues down there all the way and a little bit behind now the left coronary artery also had one branch here called the left circumflex artery the left circumflex artery is called that way because it goes behind too now the left circumflex artery releases one branch here called the left marginal artery now the common arteries that we mentioned were the right marginal artery and the left marginal artery then we had the anterior descending artery and we had the posterior descending artery we had the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery over here however here we had the left circumflex artery this is specific and we also had the diagonal branch over here when you study the pathology of the heart this is really important to know because you will not be able to understand why does the myocardial fraction happens in that region when this artery is blocked or that artery is blocked if you don't know where this artery is remember this was the right side over here this was the left side we had the ventricle and the atrium and here also the atrium and the ventricle the left ventricle Hello everyone, I developed Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. I put them links down there in the description, or you can click on a link here in a video. If you're not going to purchase my software, then at least make sure you leave a positive comment, subscribe, or like my video.